When it comes to security, having a camera that can perform well at night is extremely important. Basically, any camera can look good during the day, but it's a lot more challenging to find a camera that performs well in low light conditions. At night, cameras can become severely degraded. The image becomes noisy, and anything that's moving can exhibit ghosting issues. Not only does this look terrible, but it also makes it impossible to tell what happened afterwards. For example, here's two cameras mounted side by side. On the left, you can't see the logo on my shirt and you can barely tell what I look like. Whenever I move, I become a complete blur. In contrast, the camera on the right picks up significantly more detail, even while I'm moving. Both of these cameras are 8 megapixel turrets with similar features. The image looks fantastic on both cameras during the day, but one of them completely falls apart at night. That's why in this video, I'm going to be testing 21 different Uniview cameras in a controlled dark environment to see which ones perform the worst and which ones perform the best. But before we get to that, allow me to set the rules and to show you how we're doing our testing. To evaluate the cameras fairly, I've come up with the following test. First, I'll walk in front of the camera, then turn around and stand still for a few seconds. Pay close attention to my face during this part of the test. Some cameras can capture detail here, while on others, my face becomes a complete blur. Afterwards, I'll open an umbrella in front of me and hold it still for 2 seconds before spinning it around. This gives us a good idea of how the cameras handle motion blur. If we can still see individual colors while the umbrella is spinning, then that's a pass. But if the colors become dull, gray, and start blending together, that's a sign of poor performance. Finally, I'll hold a vehicle license plate up to the camera, then walk across the warehouse while holding up the plate. I'll repeat this exact test for every camera while trying to keep my movement as consistent as possible. For the lighting, we're using two Aperture MC lights set to 1% brightness. These lights are placed in the warehouse facing towards our testing area. I'll turn off all the other lights so the only sources of illumination will be these two lights along with the emergency exit sign. In terms of brightness, it was quite dark, but I was still able to see where I was walking. If I had to give you an estimate, I would say it was comparable to a dark alleyway or an outdoor parking lot without any lights. I brought a lux meter with me, hoping to get an accurate measurement of the illumination, but this one only goes down to one lux and kept showing zero in our test area. So we're definitely somewhere between zero and one lux, but without a more precise tool, I could not get a better measurement. And while all of these cameras have built-in infrared or built-in white light LEDs, I manually force the cameras into day mode so that they do not turn on during our testing. After all, we want to compare the low light performance of the camera, we're not here to test the infrared or the white light strength. So with that out of the way, let's start testing the cameras. To make it easy for you, I'll be sorting these tests in order from worst to best in terms of low light performance. That's not to say that the cameras at the beginning of this list are bad overall, just that they're not good in low light situations. First up, we have the 5 megapixel fisheye camera, and we really can't see a lot of what's going on here. Even if I turn up the brightness, uh, you know, it helps us a bit, but there's a lot of noise, not a lot of detail. Overall, not a good camera for low light. Next, we have the 12 megapixel fisheye, and it does a little bit better, um, but still not the greatest image. You can barely see me until I turn up the brightness. And even then, you know, there's a lot, a lot of de detail. And so I don't recommend fisheye cameras in low light situations. So the next camera on our list is this low profile 4 megapixel dome camera. It uh, is a lot better than the fisheye. All of the cameras are going to be a lot better than the fisheye from this point on. Um, but just in terms of the color on the umbrella and uh, the clarity of the license plate, I just wasn't really happy with this camera. So it's a great little camera, but not good in low light. Next up, we have the 5 megapixel Prime 2 series turret camera. And this one kind of surprised me because I thought this camera would do a lot better, uh, but it, it really didn't look that great um, in the low light. 
So I'm putting it here on the list. But, you know, this is my subjective opinion, so if you think this camera deserves to be rated higher up on the list, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but based on my observation, this camera performed quite poorly. And next up, you're going to see the TriGuard 2.0 version of this camera. So they're very similar cameras. I think they use the same sensor, um, but the TriGuard 2.0 has that uh, flashing light and the uh, two-way audio. So that's the only difference between these two cameras, but in low light, they perform about the same. All right, so now we have the Prime One Dome camera. This is eight megapixel dome. Uh, this camera was technically discontinued uh, in 2024, but a lot of people still have it, so that's why I'm adding it into the comparison. And uh, even though it's a little bit noisier than the previous camera, I think the image is a little bit nicer to look at, and I feel there are actually a little bit more details. So that's why I'm putting this camera higher up on the list. Next up, we have our 8 megapixel standard turret. This camera is really popular. It's the 3618 SR and it lands right in the middle of our list in terms of low light performance. So if you have this camera or you want to get this camera, uh, hopefully this video gives you a good idea of how it performs relative to the other Uniview cameras that we tested. So next up we have the 8 megapixel Prime 2 series, uh, starting off with the dome, and then the turret, and then the TriGuard 2.0 version. These cameras are all basically equivalent to each other in low light performance, so I'm speeding the section up a little bit faster. Um, but hopefully that gives you a good idea. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, the quality is there, the sharpness is there, it's just that during motion, we are again losing some of that um, color and separation, uh, especially in the umbrella. And here's a comparison between the standard 8 megapixel and the Prime 2 series 8 megapixel. I think the standard one has nicer colors, you can see on the umbrella. Um, but the Prime 2 series looks better for the license plate, which is quite interesting. But overall, these are very similar cameras and you can't go wrong with either of them. Next up, we have the 180 degree TriGuard 2.0 turret. This one, as you can see, it has a wider field of view. It's basically two cameras uh, stitched together into uh, one single view. And it has really good low light performance, honestly, for having such a wide field of view, it's very sufficient in the low light. Next up, we have a couple 4 megapixel cameras. First up is the 4 megapixel economic turret. This is the same camera that comes in the Uniview kit, and uh, it's not bad, honestly. The image is slightly red overall. I don't know why it looks so red, but you know, the quality is there, the face details are there. This is actually not a bad camera. Then I ranked the 4 megapixel very focal dome. So it's another 4 megapixel camera. Pretty nice image. Uh, if you look at the umbrella, the colors are very clear um, when it's still. But you'll see with these next few cameras, as soon as we start to move the umbrella, there's a lot of noise in the image. The license plate's nice and sharp though, so that's nice to see, but again in motion, it kind of falls apart. Next up we have the 4 megapixel standard dome camera, and this one's very similar to the previous camera. Maybe just a little bit brighter, um, very fine, great detail, um, you can see for yourself how it compares. This is the 4 megapixel standard turret. I don't really have much to say about it. It's pretty much the same in terms of low light performance as the 
4 megapixel dome camera. Next up is the 5 megapixel Color Hunter turret. This is a bit of an older camera, it actually came out 4 years ago in 2021, but it still performs quite well and that's why I put it near the top of the list. Next up we have the 8 megapixel Color Hunter turret. This camera used to be the absolute best camera when it released in 2023. Uh, it has since been surpassed by the Alview series, but it still puts up a very good fight. And I really just love how the image looks on this camera. It feels very natural. It looks very colorful. And I think, um, you know, the 8 megapixel Color Hunter uh, was a very great camera for its time. Next is the 8 megapixel Alview turret. Uh, and a uh, spoiler alert, the rest of the cameras from here on are going to be all Alview cameras uh, because they have extremely good low light performance. Uh, you would not even believe how dark it was when you're looking through one of these Alview cameras. And that's what gives this camera the number four spot on our list. Next up is the TriGuard 3.0 8 megapixel very focal turret. So this camera has Alview technology. It also has a very focal zoom lens. It has a built-in speaker and it has uh, flashing red and blue lights, which gives it a lot of different features and puts it at number three on our list in terms of low light performance. So the four megapixel Alview turret is just a little bit better than the 8 megapixel cameras that came before it. Um, the image looks a bit more natural, it's a little bit brighter. And if you look at the umbrella spinning, we can basically see every single color uh, even though they're rotating in motion. This is what puts the 4 megapixel Alview at number 2 on our list and I cannot wait to show you the final camera. And our best performing camera, uh, no surprises here, was the 8 megapixel Alview Plus turret. This is a brand new camera, just came out in summer of 2025, uh, basically a month ago as of recording this, and it is unbeatable in terms of low light performance. Looking at this image, you would not believe how dark it was in the warehouse, but it was dark and this camera did not care. So, after all that testing, what are some of the key takeaways? Well, if you're as much as a camera enthusiast as I am, you'll know that the CCTV manufacturers typically publish a value for each camera that they call minimum illumination. This value is supposed to be an objective rating of the camera's low light performance. The lower the value, the less light the camera requires in order to see clearly, which means that a lower value is better because it indicates that the camera can see with less light. However, it's difficult to know exactly how well a specific camera will perform based on this number. For example, how does a camera with a 0.01 minimum lux perform compared to one with a value of 0.001? What about one with a value of 0.0005? You can see how this can get confusing really quickly. Thankfully, in our low light test, we were able to get better insight into how these numbers represent real world camera performance. Here's a graph plotting the minimum illumination value for each camera and sorted from left to right based on their ranking in our test. We can see a clear downwards trend, meaning that the cameras that performed better in our test generally have a lower minimum illumination value, which is exactly what we want to see. However, there are definitely a few outliers as well. For example, the 4 megapixel economic turret has a minimum lux rating of 0.01, yet it outperforms 9 other cameras that should be doing better on paper. Here's the 5 megapixel Prime 2 series turret camera on the left versus the 4 megapixel economic turret on the right. The Prime 2 series turret is supposed to be 10 times better than this 4 megapixel turret yet it looks significantly worse in our real-world test. 
Another strange result was the TriGuard 2.0 180 degree turret camera. It's supposed to have a minimum lux rating of 0.0005, which puts it on the same level as the 8 megapixel TriGuard 3.0. Yet, when we compare the two cameras side by side, we can see that their real world performance is completely different. So basically, I think that you should take the minimum illumination rating with a grain of salt. While it generally aligns with camera performance, it's better to do your own testing by comparing two or even three cameras under the same lighting conditions. While I was compiling this chart, I wondered if there was another metric we could use to compare the cameras. And that's when I realized that sensor size could be a suitable metric. So here's a chart with the sensor size of each camera sorted in terms of low light performance from left to right. Since the fisheyes are two obvious outliers in this chart, I removed them. And after removing them, we could see a clear trend. The cameras at the top of this list have larger sensors compared to those towards the bottom. Therefore, by checking the sensor size of the camera, you'll be able to have a good idea of how it performs in low light environments. If the sensor size is 1 over 2.7 inches or smaller, then it's probably not good at night. And if the sensor is 1 over 1.8 inches or larger, it's a sign that the camera will perform well in low light environments. Sensor size is not the only thing that determines a camera's low light performance. There's also the size of the lens aperture, which is denoted by the F number beside the lens specification. The smaller number is better, meaning that a camera with an f1.0 lens is able to capture more light than a camera with an f1.6 lens. There are other factors too, such as manufacturers using special lenses that allow for higher light transmittance, and implementing better noise reduction and signal processing algorithms. These won't show up in the manufacturer's specifications, but it's something to keep in mind when choosing between different cameras. Generally, Newer cameras have better low light performance because manufacturers can implement all of the latest technologies into their designs. But hopefully this video gives you a solid overview of where the technology is today so that you can make an informed decision on which cameras to purchase for a specific project. So that's pretty much all I have to say when it comes to testing cameras in low light scenarios. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. I spent a lot of time conducting research and testing the different cameras, so I would greatly appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and I hope to see you in the next video.